Get off my stage! We're here to confront our brother because he's been abusing drugs and he's hitting his girlfriend. He'd choke her and you could hear her head hitting up against the wall and we have to call the cops. So she was a month away from having a baby and she fell on her stomach running away from your brother. And when he gets drunk or starts using drugs, he just gets really violent. Does really. your brother ever hit you? He's choked me before. Aren't you a mother first before anything else? Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. It can't be healthy for your baby being scared all the time. I just want him to get some help. You're accused of abusing your pregnant girlfriend? Yeah. Then do me a favor, stand up, okay? <laughs> this woman, she's carrying your child. I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. Hey, the baby's in her stomach. I don't hit her stomach. You got a woman that's standing by you, and she's saying, let's get some help. And I'm here, I'm telling you, here's the help. So is it a yes to get help? Take the damn help, that's what everybody's saying, that's what I'm thinking. Welcome to the show. My guests are sisters Tikiana and Taylor. Mm -hmm. And Taylor, you're 16, and Tikiana, you're 14, right? And you're here today because of your brother. Tell me what's going on with your brother. Um, we're here to confront our brother because he's been abusing drugs and he's hitting his girlfriend and putting his hands on her. Like, there's been incidents where he'd choke her and you could hear it, and he'd hear her head hitting up against the wall. and we'd have to call the cops on him. And like she, when she was eight months pregnant, um, she asked him if he could get her some food and he was drunk. And um, I don't know why he got mad, but he hit her and she started bleeding. So we took her to the bathroom um, to wipe her off and we locked him out of the house. And then, so he broke my mom's window to get inside the house. And then we had, I had to hold him, me and my sister had to hold him back so that he wouldn't get to her. And she ran outside and she even fell on her stomach while she was pregnant to run to the car. How far along was she pregnant? Eight months. So she was a month away from having a baby. And she fell on her stomach running away from your brother. Yeah, to get to the car so she could get away. Because um, he was trying to hit her again because we said we were going to call the cops. And he was like, if you're going to call the cops, I'll give you a reason. Why does your brother act like this? Uh, when he gets drunk or starts using drugs, he just gets really violent. And what other things does he do? Um, he just hits, like, he's really violent. He yells and he'll scream, like, he'll call her hateful names. And he does it to, he's disrespectful to everyone, his fiance, to us, my mother. Does he ever do it when he's sober? Uh, I haven't, but most of the time I always see him is he's always... He's always drunk or, yeah, always. or high on drugs. And, and your relationship with his, his fiance, you girls get along with yeah, her? Yeah, like my best friend. She's However, your best death, friend. She pretty much is. We've been <coughs> really good friends for a long time. And w what do you feel when you see that your brother is pretty violent to her? I hate it. It makes me just, oh, I hate it. Why does she stay with your brother if she's? I think because she's scared of what he'll do if she tries to leave him, I think that's he's, why. He's that violent? He's made threats to do things to her family and things if she leaves him and stuff. He's, yeah, he's that violent. When he's very violent with, you, with this girl, do you call the police? Yeah. There's been, I don't, I've only called him one time. I don't know about any other time that we've had to call him, but I know one time there was an incident where we had to call the police. Did the police lock him up? No, they, do, they don't even do anything. They just talk to him. And he's drunk whenever he talks to the police, and they don't even do anything. And he gets an attitude with them and everything. That's he, she, Shara usually doesn't want him to like get locked up. She usually doesn't want us to call the cops. Now I understand that you've been getting into trouble, right? Is that right, Tikiana? And until you recently moved, what were you doing? Um, I was involved in a gang, and um, I used to do drugs. You, what kind of drugs would you be doing? Like pot, I would, and drink. 
it, I mean, you, you, you're 14 years old. And why would you be doing those things? Like, I've seen my brother do it, and I just figured, and I've seen him be in a gang, and I thought since he did it and it's coming down in the family, I figured I'd just be in it too. And have, did you continue to do these things, or? No. And what made you stop? The way I act whenever I realize, whenever I, I realize that I act like kind of stupid, so I, I don't do that no more. And you were able to, and you figured that out on your own, huh? That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> what do you want to happen today? Um, I want him to change. I, w I don't want him to hit on his fiance no more, and I don't want him to stop abusing drugs and doing. And your relationship with your brother? I didn't talk to him. And why don't you talk to him? Because uh, every time he's around, we have to deal with him being drunk and putting his hands on his baby mama. We don't, we don't want to be around that. This woman is, you know, she's carrying your child. But I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. It ain't hurting the baby. Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. Brother ever hit you? No. He's choked me before. He's choked you before. And why did he choke you? Because uh, he had like he was disrespecting my mom and had her up at one o'clock in the morning. And she had to get up early for work, and he was on parole. He wasn't even supposed to have any friends over or anything. But he had a whole bunch of friends at my mom's house, and they made me mad. And then he wanted to use the phone to call more friends and go drink. And so I unplugged the phone, and I was like, you're not going to use the phone. I said, Mom is up at one o'clock in the morning, and she needs to be asleep, but she's trying to tell you to let your friends leave. You won't even listen to her. And he got mad at me because I wouldn't, because I unplugged the phone, and he choked me. And then my mom stood up and was like, um, had to get on to him and grab him, and so he let go of me. All right, so what, what I'd like you to do, ladies, is I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to talk to your brother, and at some point during the show, we'll bring you back out. Okay. Okay. All right, let's bring, let's bring your brother out. Cameron, let's bring him out. How you doing, Cameron? You got your two sisters... You know, you're, you're accused of abusing your pregnant girlfriend. You hear your sister say that, right? Yeah. Then do me a favor, stand up, okay? Um, you, you hear your sisters come out and they're, they're scared of you. You're their older brother. They say you're 19 years old, that you're in a gang, that you, all you do is drink, that you're doing drugs and that you beat up your pregnant girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear your sisters, I mean, this isn't like, you know, an ex-girlfriend that's got an ax to grind with you. These are your two little sisters, right? Yeah. When you hear them saying that, what's your response to that? I really ain't got no response. None at all? No. Not like they're telling the truth, they're lying. They well, they're probably, they probably telling the truth. They're probably, or they are? They are. Okay. Matter, you know, hitting her. Th your, your girlfriend, you're breaking a window trying to get at her. She runs out the door. She's eight months pregnant. She's falling down. You're hitting her. That's all true? Somewhat. Y'all you, you ain't got the full story. Well, I'm willing to give you a chance to tell it. I mean, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I mean, I got to do what I got to do to survive out in the streets. You know, and right now, me and my baby mama, we ain't really on good terms right now. I mean, I gotta do what I gotta do to feed my daughter, you feel me? And I mean, you, you, ain't, you, you, ain't gonna, you ain't gonna come to Tulsa and work a nine to five, so to five for me and my family. 
are you going to come to Chicago and work a nine to five to take care of me and my family? No. I got it. Fair enough. I, I don't expect you to, but you certainly don't expect me to, right? Mm, okay, yeah. so I go about and I provide for my family. I come to work and I work a job and I get paid and I go home and I take care of my kids and my wife, right? All right, but, well, but what do you, do? You, you don't live the life I live. I mean, you weren't growing up like I was growing up. You How did you grow up? Thing. I mean, thugs. I mean, I, I was growing up around gangbangers, you know, I mean, selling drugs. You know, I wasn't top the right things. You know, I grew up seeing, I grew up seeing pistol play, drugs. Believe it or not, I was growing up, when I was growing up, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth either. All right. And there was gangs in my neighborhood and there was bad guys and guys that went to jail that I grew up with and there was guys that didn't go to jail. And I happened to be one of the guys that didn't go to jail. Now you say you got caught up, you got caught up with the bad guys, right? Yeah. You got caught, are you in a gang? Yeah. And why do you, just out of curiosity's sake, everybody has a different story. Why are you in a gang? I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just things I saw. You know, I mean, at the time, I thought it was cool. But, you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm not just past my knees. I mean, it's over my chest. You feel me? No, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, it's, it's what I seen as a kid growing up. So I decided to try to follow that lifestyle. As I thought you got it, older. I thought it was cool, yeah. And, and what do you feel about that now? Now I feel like I'm already into it too deep. Okay. So, I mean, it ain't, ain't, I try to pull back. I've tried to pull back. And mm. when you say you tried to pull back, what, what did you do? I mean, I've tried to get a job. You know, I can't keep a job. You tried to live a more legitimate, more yeah. law-abiding life. Gang, since you were nine years old, Yeah. you were shot when you were 10? Yeah. Shot at or you were actually shot? I was actually shot. You had a bullet going through your body when you yeah, were 10 I had a old. bullet hit right here and go out here. Uh, who was shooting at you at 10 years old? I really can't put my finger on who it was. You just, I mean, maybe you were just caught up in gunplay? Yeah, word, words was exchanged. You know, I, he said something, I said something back. You know, he fired off, so. No. And I was 10 at the time when it happened. So, you know, me, me getting hit at 10, I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? Okay, I get hit. Somebody, somebody come and shoot me at 10 years old. Okay, well, I mean. Come that's on, pretty. That's, that's pretty brutal okay. to be shot at. And then years once old. I got once I got shot when I was ten, you know, I just jumped in it real hard. You know, I try I try to do something so so I could protect myself. You know, I had to run with pistols every day. You know. So and, you started carrying a gun when you were at a very young age. Yeah. And that gave you a sense of, of protection. Well, of I, feel, I felt like I felt like it was protecting me. I mean, still to this day, you know, when I head back to the T now, I'm gonna have a pistol on me because you know I can't walk the street you know, and just feel safe like that, you feel me? You carry a gun so you make yourself feel safe. Yeah. To protect yourself. Protect myself. Now, not growing up with a silver spoon and all that, you're a smart guy, you carry a gun to protect yourself, why the hell would you then go and beat the woman that is carrying your child? I mean, you see what I'm saying? You, you feel me? Yeah, I kind of feel you. I might be speaking out of turn here. No, you're but right. But you have two sisters. You certainly wouldn't want anybody putting her hands on them. You're right. Well, well, why wouldn't you afford that to every female? <laughs> I mean, especially, again, it, it blows my mind. This woman, is, you know, she's carrying your child. Not a stranger's, your child. You should never put your hand on a woman. I say it all the time. But I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman, knowing that there's a baby in there. It ain't hurting the baby. <laughs> you're not that dumb. Please tell me you're not that dumb. Aren't you a mother first? Before anything else? I just want him to get some help. I don't get how anybody could ever hit a pregnant woman. It ain't hurting the baby. You're not that dumb. Please tell me you're not that dumb. You are the guy. Get off my stage.
girlfriend, your fiance, she fell and she could have, what if, what if it would have ended her life? She, she the one took off out of the house. Didn't nobody tell because her to run out the house? Because you're breaking in the house. You're breaking the windows. Okay, well, she, she could have she came outside and talked to me. Like I told her to come outside and talk to me. She Why would she come, come out and talk to, talk to me? If you're dead, hey, listen, if you're that violent, you're going to start breaking in windows and chasing her. Why the hell would she just voluntarily come out and talk to you? Well, she should have talked to Were me. Were you high? Me. Were you drunk? No, I thought I, was, I, was, I think I was drinking that day. Well, she should have talked to me when I told her to come outside and talk to me. Why? We could have solved it right then. You know, and then my yeah. little sister, my little sisters wanted to get in between. And, and when my little sisters wanted to get you in between, you know what? They're, they're doing something worse. that's your job. They're doing your job. They're protecting that little girl. What they need to do is mine. They didn't. <laughs> my, I, I, again, I'm just going to say it. When you decide to bring children in the world and they count on you and they don't have anybody else, like you said, you were 13 years old. You didn't have anybody. You're right. running away. You're on your own. You think she could take care of herself? I mean, Look at that picture of your baby. She I mean, can't take care of herself. I'm going to take care of her. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to take, I'm I'm take care of my daughter. You know, Sarah, she's a grown woman. She could take care of herself. You're, first of all, you're 19 years old. Right. Okay. You already have two children. You, you, you have to grow up real fast here. You're, and you're... You, if you're not willing to commit to this woman, one, if you can't commit to, like, I'm going to protect her, I'm going to provide safety for her, I'm going to do everything I can for her. If you cannot commit to her and be there for her, stop having kids. Stop having kids with her. <laughs> All you're doing by what, what you're doing the way you're behaving, the way the decisions you're making, all you're doing, take a good look at her. All you're doing is cheating her. You're cheating her. <laughs> if I'm not doing it, if I'm not coming down there to Tulsa and, and, and putting money on your table, what are you doing to put money on your table? What are you doing to provide for your family? You asking me what am I doing? So yeah, like, what are I you mean, doing? I'm hustling. Oh, uh, everybody says that I'm hustling. I'm 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 kind and I'm doing this. What what is hustling doing? Selling drugs, yep. robbing people. What? Selling drugs. Selling drugs. Yeah. So good possibility you might get caught selling drugs, right? Yeah. And what happens when you get caught selling drugs? You make buy. You get out and try to do it different. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll ask you the question again. <laughs> What's a good possibility when you're selling drugs? What happens to you? You get locked up. You get locked up. And you might get put away for a few years. Mm -hmm. So while you're locked up and you're eating your three squares a day and you got that cot to lay on, who's taking care of that little girl? Her mama. Her mama, the one that you beat that you don't care, that you think like, ah, I'm not committed to her. So, now you, so a woman that you don't respect, which you don't, it's by not, your actions, it's what not you like say? I don't care about her. I'm always, I'm always going to care about her. She's always going to have. But you won't provide for. Her. Hmm. You said you won't provide for. Her. So my thing is, you're going to go away for a few years, and oh yeah, you're going to leave that responsibility for a woman that you won't, you don't even want to provide for. You're going to leave this, the most precious thing in your life. I would hope so. Maybe you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But this little girl right here should be the most precious thing. And you're going to leave that responsibility to somebody you really don't care about and you really don't want to provide for. Eh, go ahead. Take care of my baby. You, you're going to roll the dice with living your life. I'm going to sell drugs. Aren't you smart enough to do anything else other than that? Yeah, I've tried. And? Mm, it always fails. And why does it fail? Because you choose to make it fail? Calling in? I'm not coming in today. I'm, I'm hung over. I don't feel good. I'd rather lay around the house. That's not trying. That's, that's doing a little bit and then, ah, I, I don't want to grind it out. I, the, it's easier ways to make money. I can sell dope for a couple hours and make a lot more. I mean, I've, it's not like I just lost my job and didn't try to go get another job. I tried to go get another job. Don't nobody want to hire me, so. I mean, I have no other choice. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit at the house and keep going, try to fill out applications. Ain't nobody going to hire me. And my daughter ain't got no diapers. She ain't got no formula. So I got to go out and I got to get it.
You got to go out and get it. I got to go out. I got to hustle. I got to sell this. I got to do something to put something in my... I got to do something to put some food in my daughter's mouth. That's why I, I always tell people, plan. Plan to have children. Have a plan. How am I going to take care of them? How am I going to be there for them? Not just, oops, I got a child. What am I going to do now? Are you proud of selling drugs? No. What, what, what do you think that does? Think that helps the community or destroys the community? It destroys it. A mother has to look out the window. Boy, I wonder if they're selling drugs today. I wonder if I can let my child go out and play. I wonder if I can let my child walk to school today. I wonder if she can get by that guy without her buying drugs or my son buying drugs. You know what I mean? Do you feel me? Someday your little girl's going to walk to school. You want a bunch of people selling dope on her way to school. All the bad temptations out there. What do you sell? Weed. Weed? Anything else? Water. <coughs> what is that? Water. PCP. PCP, anything else? Crack. Crack. Hold on, crack. That would be a, a drug that would be very addictive, right? Yep. You ever seen crackheads? Yeah, every day. Not, not a pretty sight, is it? Destroys people. They become the living dead, actually, right? Mm. They're, they're like skeletons walking around. And think about it. So you're going to grow up. You're selling crack to somebody. What if somebody sells crack to your daughter someday? Some, some, somebody. Someday makes your daughter into a crackhead. That doesn't unsettle you a little bit? That doesn't say like, man, what the, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. Because there's consequences in life with everything you do. You're, you're, the, you're, you're telling me you're the problem in the neighborhood. Yeah. You're not the solution, right? I love you to death, and we don't like not being able to be around our big brother because every time we want to come around, he want to act a fool. We want to be there. We want you to be a part of the family. We want you to be around. I don't want to stop. And I don't want nobody to get hurt. Fourteen year old sister says, Hey, my brother was a decent guy at one time. He protected me. He watched out for me. And now all I do is I watch him get drunk, hit his pregnant his pregnant girlfriend, his fiance. These are your sisters. You're supposed to be a role model to him. And 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 she did look up to you. Now she doesn't. Now she's they're afraid of you. Your sisters don't even want to be around you because they're afraid of you. I mean, do they have to strap to feel better, to feel I safe? I mean, I don't want them to. Of, of course not. And I mean, I see that they're following in my footsteps. Yeah, your sister joined a gang just like you, was doing drugs just like you. But even at the tender age of 14, she figured out, man, this isn't for me. I better stop this. Does that bother you at all, that your sister's, especially your 14 year old, your little sister going down that path? Yeah, it bothers me. I know this is stupid, but I can only do the show based on my life experiences, and, and I can only talk about how, and I remember my little sister when I was little, I collected baseball cards when I was a young kid. And my little sister started buying baseball cards because I was buying baseball cards. And she just looked up to me, she was my little sister. So she'd have her little stacks of baseball cards on the windowsill. And your little sister is joining gangs and doing drugs. That could potentially ruin her life. And you know why? Because she's looking at you, what you're doing. 
You feel responsible for that? Yeah. Well, you know what, Cameron? I'm going to give you a chance to talk to your sisters. Let's bring your sisters out. What do you want to say to your brother? I just want to tell you that you're wrong and you shouldn't be putting your hands on females. I mean, you talking about you got to carry guns on you for protection, but why put yourself in that situation to where you got to carry a gun and put yourself in that situation to where you do get shot at? Why do you sit up there? You selling drugs and everything like that. I don't understand you got to put food on your table for your kids and stuff like that, but that ain't the way to do it. What happens is... What happens if one day one of them turn around and they follow you to where you go, you go stay the night with Shayra? What happens whenever you stay the night with her, they find out where you is and everything like that? You turn around and you leave. They want to go in the house, get the drugs that you sold to them because they want some more. What happens if Shayra and your kids end up dead because of that? How are you going to be looking then? How are you going to be looking whenever my niece gets older and she turns around, she sees what daddy's doing, so she thinks it's okay for her to go through the same situation. She see. Her mama getting beat, so what happens whenever she finds a dude and he's doing the same thing to her? She gonna stay around because, you know, that's, I blame Sherry for that too. She gonna stay around because she see mama staying around doing the same thing, so she's gonna think it's okay. I love you to death, and we don't like not being able to be around our big brother because every time he want to come around, he want to act a fool. We want to be there. We want you to be a part of the family. We want you to be around, but we can't because you want to act a fool every time that you is around. So, I don't know. What do you want to say to him? I just want him to stop. Because I don't want nobody to get hurt. Are you afraid of him? What times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? All the time. You are the cop. Get off my stage. I'm going to talk to your fiance. I'm going to ask you to leave the stage, and I'm going to bring you back out. You want all of us to leave? No, you, you, you stay. I want you, I want you to talk to her, because you're the ones watching what your brother's doing to her. Let's bring Cher out. You OK? Please don't cry. How you we feeling? love you. We didn't want to put you through all of this, but like, we just want him to change because we see how you love him. And you deserve better than that, Shabra. You know you do. I love you. That's why we want him to change because we understand that you love him and we do too. You deserve better than that. You shouldn't. Y'all got to think about that baby, though. Like, really, it's that baby. You know, I like to do I, I'd like you girls to also leave the stage for a few minutes. I'd like to talk to Cheryl about myself. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm up here, and I, I meet these two young ladies. And the 14-year-old seems like she's smarter than everybody up here. It's real simple. She gets it. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I tried drugs. I joined a gang. But I realized it was bad. I stopped. And I, I meet your boyfriend. And, and I do see, like, I could see where he, sometimes you just look at someone and go, they're a bad guy. But I can almost see that there's something good about Cameron. There's something that he's not just a total thug. But to hear the stories of him, you know, the, the window breaking, you have to run from him. You fall down. You, you're falling on your baby. Yeah. The abuse while you're pregnant. 
I understand that you guys were young. You've been together a long time. You're only 22. He's 19. You've been together for eight years. You guys were children when you first got together. But you see, you see this behavior. His sisters obviously are here to protect you. Yeah. They don't like the way he treats you. Why wouldn't you say, you know what, especially after you have a beautiful little girl and now you're pregnant with a little boy, when, did, when does it end? When does this, when you say, you know what, Cameron, I can't, I, you can never have me ever again. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Well, why do you stay? Can you give me an answer to that? He's a really good guy. He really is. Underneath all that, he's a good guy. I love him. When does he show the good guy? I mean, he's shown that uh, somewhat you could see where there's a good guy in it now because he's sober. But according to his sisters, according to him himself, he gets drunk a lot. Yeah, he and does. And if you say anything to him while he's drunk, he, he's gonna lay, he's gonna bring the lumber down on you. Yeah. Doesn't that make you scared? Yeah. You, you gotta be, it can't be healthy for your baby, being scared all the time. No, it's not. Isn't it fair to your child that you live your life being with somebody that's not, you don't have to live your life in fear? Yeah. But I love him. I know you love, I know, I know. <laughs> I know you love him, but at some point, where do you say, you know what, I love you, but I can't be with you? He just needs a little help. Do you think he's willing to help himself? Yeah. And what makes you think that? Because I know. If he has help, he'll be all right. Could it be that you're in love with somebody that you knew years ago and now he's not the same guy anymore? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what it is, right? Yeah, it is. I can't imagine he was that way four years ago, five <laughs> years ago. No. He has gotten a lot worse. And how, how has he got worse? I mean, his drinking has gotten a lot worse. I mean, he's always out. He doesn't come home. <laughs> his, it just, it, it, it just, it, it's so strange to hear. He's, it's not like we're talking about you know, a 40-year-old man here. We're talking about a 19-year-old. His drinking's got worse. He's 19 years old. Are you afraid of him? At times. And what times are you afraid of him? When he's really drunk. And how often is that? Uh, all the time. I think everybody in the audience, everybody watch at home, they're rooting for you. Say, you. say you take the damn help. That's what everybody's saying. That's what I'm thinking. Take the damn help. And it wouldn't be right and it wouldn't be good if, if you weren't pregnant and you said you wanted to stay with them. But that's your life. And if you wanted to live it that way and if nobody could stop you, then, then you live your life. But... You don't even get the, the, the luxury of thinking that way because now you have to think about your children. What if he gets so drunk and he you know, does something that you're not going to be around anymore? You, did you, honestly, the way you, what you know and the way you feel and what you, what you, what's in your gut, are you going to be okay not being around and, and having Cameron take care of your little ones? <laughs> no. It's kind of hard to take care of kids when you're drunk, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Or when you're walking around, you have to carry a, a firearm on you because you don't feel safe. You got people coming after you. It can't be um, a, a settling feeling for you when you, you and the man you're with has to strap a gun onto his side to protect himself. Yeah, he's always been like that. I mean, aren't you a mother first yeah. before anything else? This is the guy that you want to be daddy, that your kids are going to see, your daughter, your son. This is their father, and he's going to act this way, and he's going to treat you, his sisters, 
other women, he's going to treat them like this? Are you going to be okay with your little girl, your little boy seeing him act this way? What do you, what do you want? I just want him to get some help. Did you ever tell him to this before? Have you ever said this to him? Why not? I, don't, I wouldn't think he would listen. Do you want to tell him now? I mean, it's your life that we're talking about here. I think if you, you, really, if you love him and you want things to change, then you got to tell him he's got to change. I'm going to bring him out. You don't have to be scared. This is your opportunity to tell him whatever you need to tell him. Just, let's bring him out. Let's bring Cameron back out. What do you want to say to him? You know I love you. With all my heart. I want you to be around for our kid. I really do. So do you think if we went and got help, would it make it better? You don't know? I mean, see, we try to work things out. You know that. So, no. You said I want to work things out. So is it a yes to get help? How can, any, how can anybody, I don't understand, how can somebody help? Huh? I mean, I mean look, how long it's, look how long it's went on. I mean, I, I've tried to pull out. I've tried to pull out lots of times. It's like every time I pull out, it don't work. Oh, well, that's maybe why you need help. <laughs> it, there's nothing wrong with accepting help. There's nothing wrong if somebody, you, first of all, looking at a beautiful young girl that no matter, with everything that you put her through, she still loves you and wants to stay with you. She's willing to, she sees the good side of you. You are the father of her children, and she's sitting there saying, I love the guy, I want him to get help. He could be a good guy, he needs help. I think you're an incredible lucky man to have such a beautiful woman to stand by your side even through everything you put her through. And I say, there's nothing wrong with taking help. We'll give you help, but you gotta make a commitment. You gotta make a commitment to the, to the woman, to your unborn child, to your daughter. Yeah, I'm gonna get help. Whatever I need to do to be a, a better father, a better husband, I'll get that help. If, it, if it's alcohol counseling, going to AA, if it's anger management, if it's get you a GED so you can get a decent job, so you can support your family. You know, what the hell, man? I, I want to help you. I don't want to send you out back in the street so you can be a thug and sell more drugs, be a menace to society. No. The whole point of the show is to turn a guy like you around. And I think you can turn around. So let's, let's take the guy off the street and make him a productive member of the neighborhood, of the society. You got 200 people applauding you right now. They ain't booing you. They ain't hoping you go to jail. 
I think everybody in the audience, everybody watching at home, they're rooting for you. Yeah, say, you, say you take the damn help. That's what everybody's saying. That's what I'm thinking. Take the damn help. Because if those people can't trust you, if those people can't respect you, if those people have to be afraid of you, you got nothing. You got nothing in this world. If your children, if the woman you love, if they're afraid of you, if, if you're a, a terrible role model, if you're giving your kids no chance to grow up and say, that's my dad and I'm proud of him, then you failed at everything. Again, Cameron, you're right. You didn't, weren't born with a silver spoon. Not too many people are, really. But you, at this point, you're getting a great opportunity. You got a woman that's standing by you, and she's saying, let's get some help. And I'm here. I'm telling you, here's the help. Not that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed. I need help. There's times when I'm on my knees, and I need somebody to help me get up. It's just that way in life. Some to everybody needs help. Nobody's Superman. Nobody. So for the woman that you brought the precious joy of life to you, and you got another one on the way, I think you could look her in the eyes and say, yeah, I'll go get help. But only if you really want to. It's got to come from you. Can't be me telling you. You say whatever you want to her. And then whenever you say, you could either walk off the stage and go get help, or you could walk off and go live the thug life. Do we want to get help? Then let me help you up, and let's go get you some help. Three years ago, when I woke up, my stepfather was laying on top of me. I'm here today just to find out who's telling the truth, my daughter or my husband. Did you make a sexual advance to your stepfather? Hell no. And I panicked. I was scared. He admitted being in her room. I wasn't as room. a father, not as a no. pedophile. At this time, she was 13, 14 years old. Your first reaction is to believe your child. I didn't know what to do. I was just scared and frightened. Is she lying? She tell a bald face ass lie. Knowing that my daughter lies like she does. Your daughter lies? Oh, she lies like the devil. I still love my wife and my dog. This is my family. Now, he took a lie detector test before the show. I want to know the truth. Somebody lying. You insisted that your daughter also be lie detector. She said, I got a guaranteed way to get rid of any man I don't want you to be with. Is he telling the truth? Yeah! And the results for your lie detector test is that... Well, I believe in ass words. Oh, she lies like the devil. <laughs> yeah, they both do. Your husband and your daughter? Yes. So, um... I asked her, um, she told me the conversation that we were having on the telephone. So in my mind, I'm like, there's no way possible that you could tell me the conversation word for word between me and my husband on the cell phone unless he was right close to you. 
We hang up. I told her I'll take care of it. He came, he came back over to the house because I was already moving out. The situation was I had decided that I wanted a divorce and I was leaving. I asked the children, do you guys want to live with me or do you want to live with your father? And they wanted to know, well, what size is your house? I'm like 5,000 square feet. They're just like, we're going to stay with dad. I'm like, why? They're like, dad's house is bigger. 1,200 more square feet. So I said, fine, including the oldest daughter said she wanted to stay, mainly because I'm the parent that makes you do your homework. I'm the parent that whoops you're you behind. You're the disciplinarian. I'm the one that makes you clean up, and he's like the friend. If you don't mind me asking, why were you going to get a divorce? Um, we just didn't get along anymore. Um, we were not on the same page. We were constantly arguing, and it just wasn't good for the kids. It just wasn't good. Okay. So um, when he got back to the house, I was really upset with him, and I confronted him about it. And he's just like, what are you talking about? You know, like he didn't have a clue of what I was talking about. And I was like, well, let's go back over to the house and get this straight. So when we got back over there, I asked her again in front of him, and he, she told me the exact same story again. So he, you know, I was really angry, and um, he was just like, okay, well, if you, if you believe this after I've been with you for this many years, and I'm like, well, what were you doing in her room in the first place? And he admitted being in her room, but he said that he went in there to pick her up, to put her in her bed, and I'm like, and no. how old she's 13, 14 She's 13 at the time? years old, and she's about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 I'm 5'11". So, like, if I stand up, this yeah. is 5'11". Who picks up a 5'11 year old kid? Somebody really, really strong. So, um, I mean, you could have just tapped her and said, hey, right. get up, go get in your bed. His excuse was he didn't want her to get in trouble for laying on the floor. Now, it's a school night. She's in her room. The door is closed on the right-hand side of the house. He's supposed to be on the left-hand side of the house getting mattresses. Had no business in her room, period. I didn't know what to do. I was just scared and frightened. But then you're here on the internet, pulling up your shirt, blowing kisses. That's pretty shocking. I'm an old school mom. You can't be a hoe in my house. Now, he took a lie detector test before the show. I want to know the truth. Somebody lying. Is he telling the truth? Yeah. And the results? for your lie detector test is that well I believe in ass whoopings. So um, we argued, I set up a court date, took it to trial. Um, we, I moved all the kids over to the new house with me. And my daughter just started really acting out differently, um, like getting on the internet and um, setting up websites. And she had like thousands and thousands of hits of grown men. Trying to contact her. Right, and she's on there blowing kisses and that type of stuff. So you know? her behavior changed. Yeah, you know, and things that, like, I'm, I'm an old school mom. I don't believe in that type of behavior. You know, you, you can't be a hoe in my house. You, you know. So I, I talked to her about it, and I told her, I said, now, like, just two weeks ago, less than a month ago now, you claimed that my husband was laying on top of you. But then you're here on the Internet pulling up your shirt, blowing kisses, talking to these men like you're a grown woman. And, what, and she's 14 years old. Yeah. I had to get one of my friends to go in and open up all her little back doors, and then she had it encrypted. So by the time we found out about it and got it open, I'm old school. I believe in ass whoopings. Excuse my language. I believe in them, um, too, so. You know, you, you know, I'm, a, I'm the type of mom that I, I give, you, I give, you, give, you, I give you your your freedom, but it's only so far you can go in my house as a kid. And um, so I locked the internet up. Um, she could only use the internet when I was standing there watching her. And we had, at the time, I had hired a nanny to move into my house. So all of a sudden, like two weeks down the road, this lady just moves out. You know, and she moved out with no pay, no warning or nothing. So I'm thinking to myself, did the kids get on your nerves that bad where you just left without your money? So she said, um, to tell you the truth, they left because of your daughter, because they said that your daughter was evil 
and that they didn't want to be the cause of her if she got mad at them what she would say to them that would be a lie and she came back and said that my daughter told her that I got something special planned for which was the guy that got in the internet for her and you know found out all the information and she says um I have a guaranteed way to get rid of any man that I don't want my mom to have and it works so in my mind I'm like damn you know is this my kid or is this some you know on the street that's pretty shocking you know so this is when I started to think maybe she might not be telling the truth here because you got to understand as a mother when your child comes to you and says daddy's laying on top of me your first reaction is to believe your child as a mother just as, just as a mother i'm not the type of woman that's going to take the man's side over my baby side i just don't believe in that because i figure like this she's a kid you're an adult you know better you set yourself up by being in her bedroom at one o'clock in the damn morning when you should have had your ass upstairs with the man. <clears throat> So, what happened when you sent your daughter to live with her biological father? Okay, well, I sent her there because she started stealing in school. Um, she would get expelled from school, and she would tell the principal, "Oh, I don't have a mom. I live by myself. I don't, I'm neglected. I can't get expelled from school because I don't have anyone to take care of me." And I'm there every day. This girl living in a 5,000 square foot house, telling people she's neglected. So the principal's calling me saying. Well, she says that you're never at home. I'm like, I'm here every day, all day. So I had to go to court. As we were standing in court and the, the, the judge was giving her a sentence, he told her, you have zero remorse. And I thought about what he said. He said, you have zero remorse for what you have done, which was she stole someone's backpack, took their money out of it, and she just made it seem like, well, I didn't know whose backpack it was anyway, and I needed the money, so I just took it. So... I'm thinking to myself now, you've turned the family upside down by saying that your stepfather laid on top of you. You have three siblings that are just not eating now, not learning in school. They're upset. They're worried about their dad going to jail for 40 years. Um, and you're walking around happy like, it's, like everything is good. And that's what made me think to myself, this child has no remorse. I decided to, maybe if I send her to the ghetto for a little bit, she can kind of wake up and say, you know, things are not owed to me. My mom works hard and gives me the things that she gives me and my stepdad because out of the kindness of their heart, not because we have to do this for her. So I sent her to Detroit and when she got there, she was like, this is not the type of lifestyle I'm accustomed to. He was just like, we catch the bus here. If we don't have a car. If you, don't, if you don't have no money to catch the bus, you get out and walk. And she was just like, well, the house is always dirty. He was like, well, then you get in there and you clean it up. So he was basically like, I'm going to take you to school, I'll be there when you get out of school, and you'll come straight home. When I woke up, my stepfather was laying on top of me. Is she lying? She tell a bold-faced ass lie. I want to know the truth. Somebody lying. You insisted that your daughter also be lie detector. She said, I got a guaranteed way to get rid of any man I don't want you to be with. And the results of your daughter's lie detector test is that Get off my stage! So I call her on her phone and she doesn't answer. The cell phone that I provide her with, when I call you on your phone and I'm paying the bill, you better pick the phone up. So, anyway, I took her back to Vegas, took her to the doctor. I mean, we didn't even go stopped to get anything to eat, went straight to the doctor. So I'm like, okay, she says, I'm gonna recommend you take her to see a psychiatrist. So I did, we made an appointment the next day, we went to go see her, and the psychiatrist basically said, your daughter is very vindictive and malicious, and I think she needs to go to juvenile. And I'm like, and that's your professional opinion? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not gonna put her in juvenile because if she's already lying, stealing, and making up whatever, then going to juvenile, she'll just be a professional at it. I said, I'll be her juvenile. I'll lock her up in my house. So I took her back home. 
uh, she had got kicked out of school, so I put her in a, um, you got to keep in mind, she's a 4.0 student. So I put her in an adult education school where people are in there because they drop out or whatever. And this happened three years ago. What, what do you believe now? To be honest with you, I don't know. I honestly don't know because his story doesn't make sense. He says he went in there to pick her up and he said he picked her up from this way. Meaning if she's laying here, he's picking her up from this way. But when you go in to pick someone up, you usually scoop them from this way, you know? So that didn't make sense to me, first of all. Second of all, you had no reason to pick her up. She's 5'11". If you want her to get off the floor, tell her to get your ass off the floor and go get in your bed. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to go pick a child up that's 5 feet 10, 5 feet 11. You could just say get because but, I took it to the extreme, but as a mother, that well, you, is my and you, job. And you moved him back in the house, right? Okay, I'm going to get to that. You got to understand, as a mother, she's not my only child. I have three other children, and my three other children were very miserable. And I asked them, I says, babies, what's the matter? What is it that mommy can do to help you? And they're just like, we need our daddy back. And I'm like, okay, well, daddy's not coming back. What else can I do to help you? And that's, in their minds, their dad is their whole world. But they don't want to just live with their dad. I'm like, okay, well, you can go live with daddy, and you can come and visit mommy. They're like, no, we need mommy and daddy together. So since she was basically out of control, and the kids were not eating, my son was just getting so skinny. My other son was just depressed. My little girl would cry all the time. She went from being a straight-A student to an F student. My boys dropped down to F students. I actually had to put one son back a grade. So I talked to Alexis about it because I felt like it was the right thing to do since she's the one that said he was laying on top of her. I said, how do you feel if I have their father move back in here just and we can try to work this out? But their agreement was to come back, take care of the kids, let's try to get them back healthy, and we're still going to deal with this in court or whatever. So but in time, when it came time for him to go to court... Any chance of you two reconciling or... You and Greg? I can't tell you none of that right now because I need to know the truth. I need to know the truth. And not just, it's not just for my sake, but I have a nine-year-old daughter. I have a nine-year-old daughter, which is his biological daughter. And let's just say we do get a divorce and we go our separate ways. He has to have visitation rights to his children. I have to be able to trust that I can send my nine-year-old daughter to him and he's not going to be laying on top of her. And your daughter, since she, you brought her back from Detroit, since she's been back in the house, how is she? Oh, I've been whooping that ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, uh, oh. she, she has her grades up. She's, I put her in college and high school because um, she's a very intelligent, highly intelligent young lady. And I just felt like... Um, Did her behavior improve? She had no choice. She had no choice. Because if I wasn't whooping your behind, I was cycling you. Because I'm, I'm ex-Navy. So we do push-ups, we do sit-ups, we do squats. Whatever it takes. Because I feel like this. Ha ha happy Veterans Day, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I feel like this. It's my job to save her from herself. So I put her in college. She has full-time college and full-time high school. So she doesn't have time to get in trouble. Then when she comes home, she has to cook, clean do laundry, fold up. I keep her busy. What do you ultimately want to happen today? I sort of feel like I'm living in a house and I don't know who's my enemy. I don't know if it's my daughter that's, that's being vindictive and just like really doing what she said. I got a guaranteed way to get rid of any man I don't want you to be with. Cause it's something she has said to him that, that was out of line. So I want to know, is this something coming from her out of her anger towards me because I do whoop that behind when you're out of line? Or is it a jealousy thing? Or did this really happen and you just a pervert and trying to play it off like you a good daddy? That's what the f we're here for. Uh -huh. You wanted, the, you wanted the lie detector test results, you got him. He failed, you passed, your daughter passed. What do you want to say to him? I can't say that on television. <laughs> she ain't got to say it. But what I do want to say is, all 
have put me through, I damn near took my life over this. Well, you would think I had that. Because I thought it was my fault. You should have took your life over this. You should have took your life. You should have took your life. still believe that you believe in this test me? because the I ain't got nothing. The proof in the I haven't done a thing. You know what? I haven't done a thing. We said that once the test came out, you were so sure that you were going to pass the test. I have no problem test. with it. That is still don't. Do not run that on now me I right now. I still don't okay, have a problem can with Can we it. just clean it up just a I'm little sorry. bit? I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm just, I'm on fire. I know. Because you on fire. He How do you think I feel? Boy, boy. What you going to do to me? Tell me what, Angie? I ain't going to do nothing for real. I'm going to walk away from this. And I'm going to get my babies together. I'm going to help them get their minds back on track. All that, all that nonsense you ran through their heads about daddy didn't do this, making them turn against their sister, they don't making me you. turn against my they daughter. They don't believe this one bit. They don't believe this no one bit. I don't give a they damn. I'm going to let them know it all is All four is still my kids. It, no, baby. They're going to be your be kids. kids. But let me tell you something. You will not be left alone with my nine-year-old daughter. This is what you wanted to make a mockery of our kids. No, I want to be true. This is what you wanted to make a mockery of our kids. You wanted to be true. I wanted the truth. You know. I gave you the benefit of the doubt to come back into your children's lives. I I let you, I trusted you. If I felt I'm so wrong, I've done something. You think I would come up here and take a polygraph test? You raised my Let's daughter from real. the age of two years that old. That should tell you something. And you're going to go lay on top of her? That should tell you something. No, that should Why tell would me. I want to come back into your house after you'd accuse me for something with your child? Are you crazy? That tell me. Why would I come way down here and take a polygraph test? That's what it tell me. Oh, That's what it tell me. I just, and I want to point out. I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. I did believe you in the beginning, but because you had told so many lies, I doubted you, baby. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, baby. And I promise you, I will never let nobody else hurt you like that, baby. I'm so sorry, but I need you to just be honest. Be honest, don't cry wolf when it's not meant to cry wolf because when something really happens to you, baby, people are gonna doubt you. <laughs> They're gonna doubt you, baby. You have to tell me the truth, baby. I am here to protect you. I'm a strong enough woman to stand up for you and to protect you, but you got to trust me. You gotta trust me, okay? Yes, no. <laughs> but you do not have to deal with this no more because I will handle it. Okay? Yes, ma'am. I will handle this. Yes, ma'am. And I, I did believe you in the beginning, and I did do all the things I was supposed to do as a mother, but because you just started, like, doing things that, you know, you don't have no business doing, I well, thought that maybe I hope, you were not telling the truth, baby. I hope this helps you, that you've been telling the truth. This has been going on for three years. It must be hard. I know you just wanted your stepdad to apologize. I guess he's not ready to do that right now. But the good thing is you got a mother that is a strong woman. She's a great role model. And you just need to focus on your mom and, and listen to your mom and move forward. Good luck to you, okay? Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's finally got the truth out. <laughs>
Aisha is here because her boyfriend Elijah is controlling and abusive. He's even punched her while she was pregnant. All of this because he believes she's cheating. All this and more on today's Steve Wilco Show. When I found out I was pregnant, I told him and he punched me in my stomach. The problem is, she dressing to get attention from other men. When I dress the way that I dress, I want to look good. What woman doesn't? She doesn't tell you how she dressed, right, Steve? Like, she wants me to think I'm crazy. Have you ever cheated on Elijah? No. Do you ever cheat on her? I know I'm not cheating. I know I'm not cheating. I know I'm not cheating, Steve. The results are, you did not tell the truth. I'm like a ticking time bomb. It's being physical. I never hit her. Grab me, I would try to choke him. You're kind of both being abusive towards each other. We are. You have two little babies in your house, and they're watching you guys do this. You have given me reason not to trust you. Are you cheating? No. OK, wait, before he tells the test, can you come clean with me now? Oh, God. Is there anything you want to tell him now? No. Aisha, what's going on with your boyfriend? Um, well, we've been together for a year, and we have a five-month-old baby, and he just doesn't trust me at all. And at the beginning of the relationship, I was with someone else, and I cut all ties to be with Elijah. And so I'm you were dating somebody else, you met Elijah, you're like, I kind of like him better, you broke it off with the other guy, and you started seeing Elijah. Yeah. Okay. And he hasn't been able to trust me ever since. Why? Because you were cheating on that guy with him? Well, I wasn't, me and the other guy wasn't together, but he lived with me, so he didn't really trust that. Oh, he thought that there was more to it than yeah. being just living together. Yeah. And after a while, he started being kind of controlling. He didn't like what I was wearing or how I dressed. He said it was provocative and it was for other men and whatnot, and that wasn't the case. And I started asking him if I can wear this and if I can wear that. So I started getting his approval for stuff and whatnot. And then after that, I attended, I tried to go to school. And there was an instance where I had to exchange numbers with someone for um, in case we missed our homework or something. He went through my phone and he said that I was cheating on him. Have you ever cheated on Elijah? No. Never? Not at all. How long have you guys been together? A year. A year. And do you have a child together? Yes. Isn't a lot of the problem um, that you're dating like a very young guy, a, a kid? Yeah. He's 18 years old. Yeah. Maybe the, like the clothes thing's not an issue, but once you give into that, then it becomes he's More looking at problem. your phone and who's this guy? Yeah. So it just. It does, it does escalate to that. But at the time, it wasn't a problem, but it did escalate from that. Right, it, you chip away at your freedom. Yeah, and before I found out I was pregnant, I was having symptoms of being tired, and I didn't want to have sex and all that. And when we did have sex, he said that I felt different. But it was only because I was pregnant, but I didn't know. So after that... Oh, your that, body felt different. Right, my body felt different. So when I found out I was pregnant, I told him, and his first reaction was, he punched me. And... Hold on a second. You found out you were pregnant. You tell your boyfriend, hey, we're going to have a baby. And he punched you. He punched me. And I screamed. Where did he punch you? In my stomach. Oh. I screamed and I was scared. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was scared. And um, a friend yeah, of mine I was Yeah, I got to imagine it was painful. You're scared. That's like the craziest reaction you would ever expect from somebody. Yeah, a, a friend of mine came in to see what was going on, but I was really pissed. I started crying. I walked off. I started walking home, and he chased me. He apologized. He, he said he was sorry, and it was never going to happen again. So I forgave him, and I took him how, back. How could you possibly forgive anybody for doing that? No, but I, I forgave him and we made up and after that everything was okay everything was fine then when I was about like four months pregnant I was really sick and I didn't feel like having sex or whatnot so he decided to break up with me and why did he decide to break up with you I guess because I wasn't having sex with him he just decided so to break up so you're with me. pregnant and he breaks up with you because you don't want to have sex he broke up with me he decided to be with someone else 
And I didn't know about it, but I had a feeling, and my intuition told me to go to his house. So I went to his house, and the other girl was there, and I forgave him again. Oh, my God. And he says he didn't cheat on me because we weren't together, but to me, I felt like I was cheating on him because You're pregnant we with this both child. didn't break up. He broke up. Right. So a couple months after that, I was like about six months pregnant. I was tired of it, and I took his clothes to his house. As I was driving off, or as I got in my car to pull off, he threw a brick at the car. It didn't hit the car, it went past the car, and I left. So that's better. I, dropped, I parked the car, and I came back on foot to talk to him about it. And I mean, I'm having his baby, I really wanted us to work out. And I forgave him again, we had the baby, everything was good. After I had the baby, like, she's five months now, so when she was about three months, we got into another argument. And this argument, it got physical. Um, he pulled my hair, I pulled his hair, he scratched me, I scratched him, we were yelling, we was tussling. He's always accusing me of cheating on him. I'm at home all the time. I'm at home, I have two kids, so let me and ask I'm you, at home. Why are you here today? Because he says that the only way that we will mend our relationship and he will possibly marry me as if I prove to him that I'm not cheating. And I'm supposed to help you do that? Yes. If I can get the lie detector test and prove to him that I'm not why, cheating, then no, hopefully see, everything will be good. Why in the hell would I help you stay with this guy? When I dress the way that I dress, I want to look good. What woman doesn't? She doesn't tell you how she dressed, right, Steve? Like, she wants me to think I'm crazy. I know I'm not cheating. I know I'm not cheating. I know I'm not cheating, I'm not cheating Steve. The results are, you did not tell the truth. When I dress the way that I dress, I want to look good. What woman doesn't? She doesn't tell you how she dressed, right, Steve? Like, she wants me to think I'm crazy. seem like a very nice young lady and and of course I, I want to help you but what help am I giving you to help you prove to some guy that's been abusive to you so you can stay with him he says that he's gonna change and if we can get the lie detector and do you test I want you to be honest with yourself I want you to be really honest do you think that this piece of paper when it comes back and it says that you're not cheating do you think that a piece of paper can really change anybody? Yes, I do, because that's the, that's the root of all the problems. If that problem goes away, then we will have no problems. There will be no problems to argue. And, be and no... you think the problems are just gonna go away? Yeah, I do. Okay. Here is your boyfriend, Elijah. You, 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 you so sneaky, like, I don't understand it. Sneaky how? I'm at home. Steve, when you go like, to work, she, she, I'm at home. When you come home, I'm at home. She wants me to think I'm crazy, work, though, Steve. Like, you don't well, understand? I think it, you're crazy, Steve. and I just met you. I'm not crazy, Steve. I might got punk, but I'm not crazy. But she, she doesn't tell you how she okay. dressed, right, Steve? Okay. Like, okay. for real, man. I have to ask you. She says to you, Elijah, I'm pregnant. And you punch her in the stomach. Tell me if I'm wrong. No, you're not wrong, Steve. Okay. You know, when I hear a story like that, I just want to kick you in your <laughs> You know, like, boom. Um, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, that, like you heard that, and she punched, you punched her in the stomach. I hear this stupid story, I want to kick you in the <laughs> um, That's a reaction, though, like. That's a reaction. It's but a reaction. you know what? I know it's wrong, so I control myself and I don't do it. You know it's wrong. Why can't you control yourself and not, you know, not punch her in the stomach with your child in her belly? I mean, a pregnant woman? A pregnant woman? My God, man. What caused you to react to punch her in the stomach when she told you she was carrying your child? Because I wasn't ready for kids, actually, Steve. I'm young. So what I was 17 years old. What was the point to push her in the stomach? I was still in high school. I'm trying to graduate. I'm trying to get myself situated. Okay, get to the point where you justify punching her in the stomach. What was that? Get to the point where you justify punching her in the stomach. I don't justify it. 
Uh, but I still uh, can't uh, understand uh, uh, what was the reaction that caused you to do that. Yes. How do you explain it to your little daughter someday when she grows up and says, Dad, when I was in mom's stomach, you found out you punched me. How do you tell your daughter that? I, I don't even know, Steve. Yeah, I don't I know, know either. Um, this young woman's on my show today because she loves you, she has a child with you, and she wants, she wants a relationship to go on. Why? I have no idea. You punched her in the stomach when she was pregnant. You left her while she was pregnant because she wouldn't have sex with you. Um, then you shacked up with some other girl, and then you threw a brick at a car that she's driving. It wasn't intended to hit her, though. I mean, what was? I, 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 I didn't throw it right at a window. Like, hey, let me bust the window. I threw it the, the so brick. So tell me the what the intent is when you throw a brick at somebody. What is the intent? The intent was anger. That that was the intent. Just it, like punching in the stomach was, emotion, was anger. 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 Right. Yeah, it, it was an anger problem, Steve. And that's how you deal with it. You throw bricks and you punch people in the stomach. I am regretful, Steve. I apologize for everything I ever did. Uh, I love this guy to death. To um, death, Steve. You love her to death. To death, Steve. That's the scary thing. Um, <laughs> um, do you think she's cheating on you? And why do you think she's cheating on you? Because the way she acts around certain men, we get around a certain crowd, her old perspective change. And the how does what? Changed. So her her dress changes. Her personality changes. And how does her personality change? It's like she 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 paying the guys or whoever we're around more attention than me. It's like I'm right here. So why why are you giving all your attention to the next individual when you got me sitting right here beside you? Like, it's called socializing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the way it's the way you socialize, though, Steve. Yeah. You don't socialize with your breasts and your feet hanging all out and your booty all sticking out. Come on now. The problem is, she dressing to get attention from other men. When I dress the way that I dress, I want to look good. What woman doesn't? Do you ever cheat on her? I know I'm Hold not on. cheating. I know I'm not I cheating. I know I'm not cheating, Steve. And the results are, you did not tell the truth. I want to look good. What woman doesn't? The problem is, she dressing to get attention from other men. When I dress the way that I dress, I just had a baby. I want to look good. I don't want to look what good for other men. What woman doesn't? I don't want to look good for other men and other people. I you do it because I'm good. out with him. I'm, I'm with him. Right. I'm not with. I'm not leaving him to go out and dress nice. I'm dressing nice so, because I'm with him. Because and we're she's out dressed together. nice and she talks to other men. She's. You think she's cheating on you? Certainly, basically, yes, Steve. Uh, any proof? Uh, you know, ever find like a man's drawers in your bedroom or? Well, Steve, before me, she, she had another guy. But she left him to be with you. But if you love this guy, but you left him all of a sudden to be with me. She said she didn't love him. What's the problem? The problem is I don't trust her because the simple fact, I feel like if she did it to him, she may do it to me. Okay. See, I understand this uh, rationale of thought. It's not correct, but I understand why he's thinking that way. And it's a case, a big case of immaturity. Um, <laughs> And if you see what you're, and you're a couple years older, and women mature much faster, in my opinion, than men, you're gonna, if you stay with them, you're gonna have to deal with this way of thinking for a long time. And I'm telling you, a piece of paper is not gonna change that. Um, the other thing is, she, you know, she's seeking your approval on what she wears, and she she dressing to get attention from other men, Steve. That's how I but feel. Every it might not woman be does that. But that's how I feel. Women want to be looking good. They want other people to notice them. Why do you, you know? <laughs> is, is that just the way of life, man? You didn't know that? No. I did. No. All right. I, it, the fact of it is, I could stand here and have this conversation for the next three hours. And it'd be like talking to that chair. <laughs> Same results. You know what I mean? In about, I'm going to say 15 years from now, he's going to be ready to be in an adult relationship. Can you wait 15 years? 
Yes, I can. Oh. <laughs> and and tr truthfully, you can't. You know you can't. You know who are the only people that wait for anything for 15 years? Prison. People in jail. And, and, and that's only because they have no choice. All right, you took a lie detector test. Oh, by the way, do you ever cheat on her? One time, but Steve, no, 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 no. No, we wasn't, we wasn't together. We were split, Steve, split. I broke it off with her. Were you dressed all sexy and? No, I don't, I don't dress, I don't dress there in place. I dress normal. I don't dress to get in trouble. I'm okay how I look. All right, uh, your, your boyfriend took a lie detector test. I'm just curious, I don't even know what the hell we asked him. But what if he fails? What's ever on here? Then I'm gonna have to leave him. Because You're gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Elijah, you came on the show today and you took a lie detector test because you want to prove to Aisha that you're a true blue guy, right? Okay. We asked you, besides the one female that she knows about, since in a relationship with Aisha, have you had any sexual, physical contact with any other females besides Aisha? He answered no. Besides the one female she knows about since in a relationship with Aisha, have you had sexual intercourse with any other females besides Aisha? He answered no. Are you currently cheating on Aisha? Currently. No, he said no. He said he's not cheating. And the results for all three questions came back the same. And the results are... I never hit her. He grabbed me. I would try to choke him. You're kind of both being abusive towards each other. We are. You have two little babies in your house. And they're watching you guys do this. We asked you, besides the one female that she knows about, since in a relationship with Aisha, have you had any sexual, physical contact with any other females besides Aisha? He answered no. Besides the one female she knows about since in a relationship with Aisha, have you had sexual intercourse with any other females besides Aisha? He answered no. Are you currently cheating on Aisha? Currently. No, he said no. He said he's not cheating. And the results for all three questions came back the same. And the results are, he did not tell the truth. I'm gonna put it on my baby. Oh, all three questions? Oh, wow. All three questions. Currently cheating on Aisha, for real? Currently? For real? Seriously? Wait, 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 see right there what he just said? Currently cheating on Aisha? Not that, oh, one and two are wrong. He just went to jump to number three. But she, she know I'm not cheating on her. We together, How does she 20, know? could we together 24/7? 24/7. 7. 24/7. Impossible. That's crazy. That's crazy. For that's, real? That's, you know what we gotta start doing that's on the show? What I'd like to do, and maybe my director can do this in the future, but it would have been perfect for this case. Roll back the reaction of your face when he like. <laughs> There's no possible way you could have failed that thing, right? Well, but I guess. now, do you feel pretty good about your results? Yeah, I about do. About your take the test? Yep. So if you pass, then wouldn't it seem obvious that Damn, he geez. was indeed lying? And if he was indeed lying, what are you going to do about it? I have to leave him. He, you will leave him. We'll find out because we're going to play pick a door. Oh. That's crazy, that's the evil. Is so, it crazy? Something wrong with your test or something, I swear. <laughs> something wrong with that test, Eve. Or, or. Something wrong with that or, test. Or, no, no, is there something no, wrong with you? No, something wrong with your test. Come on, Now, 
Aisha took a lie detector test. Have you ever had sexual contact with another man while in a relationship with Aisha, no. uh, with Elijah? She answered no. Um, have you ever had sexual intercourse with another man while in a relationship with Elijah? She answered no. No. Are you currently cheating on Elijah? She answered no. No. And the results for her lie detector test is that she also did not tell the truth. <laughs> That's not right. No, no, That's it's not, not right. it's not right now, right? That's not right. Oh, but but mine's had to be right. You put yeah. on it's not no, right. No, no, bruh, no, bruh. Currently? You, you, currently? You, you expect me to believe that? Currently? You expect For real? No, I don't want to believe it. Currently? I'm at home when you both work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't have a car to go anywhere. Hold on. I know I'm not cheating. Hold on. I know I'm not cheating. I know I'm not cheating, Steve. Okay. So, I mean, really, you both are lying on the lie detector test. Listen. You can, the cameras are rolling and you can keep playing this act of, oh, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. But the truth of it is, no, I, I mean, you certainly no, know that you're a dirty dog and you're the sneaky dirty dog. No, I did not. Um, no, I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. And I, I've been having a little bit of fun with this story, but what you did is despicable. You put your hands on a woman. I hope whatever woman becomes involved with you in the future, seriously, calls the police, locks you up, and you get what you deserve for touching anybody like that. Um, I'm the biggest advocate of young people not having kids, certainly when they're not in committed relationships. Your young teenage years, which you're still a teenager, you're barely out of it, is to date, go to school, further yourselves, not jump in having kids because neither one of you show on any level of maturity that you're re ready for this type of relationship. But I'll say this, because there is a little baby involved and this isn't a typical young couple just breaking up, or if you do break up, but it's if over. you do want to take, I, know I, I don't care about who's faithful here. I really don't, yeah, you're I don't right, care. It's over. But what it's I over, do Steve. care about is that, that little baby gets the right treatment. So if either one it's of you over. want help with uh, some parenting classes, some counseling, I certainly would advise that. So instead of focusing on this relationship that's going nowhere, I would certainly redirect your energy in focusing on being a good parent. Good luck to both of you. I'm like a ticking time bomb. It's being physical. You're kind of both being abusive towards each other. We are. You have given me reason not to trust you. Are you cheating? No. Is there anything you want to tell him now? No. I'm like a ticking time bomb. It's being physical. You're kind of both being abusive towards each other. We are. Sherry and Stefan have two children together and are engaged to be married. They had the perfect relationship until it turned abusive. Now with the children begging for the abuse to stop, they called me for help. Sherry, what's going on with your relationship? Steve, I'm here today because we need help. It's, it's gone to the point where it's being physical. And now my two-year-old notices it. And he'll come up to us and say, stop, no, stop fighting, stop arguing. And now, you know, if we don't get help now, we won't have a family at the end. And I love my family. It started, you know, when I was first pregnant with him. Um, I was two months pregnant and one of um, my ex, an ex called my phone. And this is what happened. Uh, he, he got mad and he threw the phone. Like he threw so he saw that it was the next calling. Right, he did. And he threw the phone and it almost hit me. So, um, you know, me being the person I am, I'm not an angel. You know, I'm a very stand-up person and I will defend myself. So I came back at him. I told him, if you ever do, you know, if you ever throw a phone or you try to touch me again, I'm going to try to mess you up. That's when he grabbed me, you know, he 
grabbed me. He tried to choke me. I would try to choke him back, and he pushed me down. This is, this is a case, I think you're trying to say, where you're kind of both being abusive towards each other. We are. So he's at fault. And I am at fault, too. You're at fault, too. Because I have a very, um, yes, I, I'm like a ticking time bomb. If I don't get the information that I need, then, you know, I'm going to try any kind of way to get it from them how scared little kids must be because right. it's you know and it's scared that's it's the point it scares me also you know when my two year old notices that we're actually having a confrontation and that many, that how, scares me how many children do you have i have a 4 month old and i have a 2 year old and home is supposed to be the safe place it is supposed to and be and mom and dad are supposed to show each other love and the kids are supposed to be feel loved and all the things that they feel unsafe in the world they're supposed to come home and feel safe with their parents. Right. And so, your kids um, aren't getting that. You know, in most of our arguments that lead to these physical, you know, confrontations is about trust and him cheating. Oh, you think he's cheating on you? When I was around six months pregnant, I had suspicions that he was cheating because he became very distant. Later on, you know, with me keep confronting him, trying to get the information out of him, you know, it would turn physical and he would get mad at me, you know, for keep asking him. He would tell me, you know, stop thinking crazy. You know, you're, you're, you're just thinking crazy. And um, Were you thinking crazy? At first I did, you know, I was like, well, maybe he's not cheating. Maybe he's not doing anything. But later on, he came clean. He said, you know, when you was pregnant with our first child, I was cheating on you. And that really hurt me. It sure. hurt me very bad to the point where, you know, I just want him to feel the same pain. So I did tell him that, you know, I cheated on him with my boss, but it was a lie. I just wanted him to feel the same pain. You told him you cheated. I did. I did. I told him I cheated on him. And, and are you married now? No, we're, we, this, you know, he says we argue all the time now. You know, it's always an argument you, between us. You had planned us. to get married. You are like, you got engaged. You're right. planning, but so, so much abuse. And what type of abuse? Verbal, physical? Physical. Um, You're hitting each other? Yes, we do. How is it to live like that in your own house? The person that you have sex with also is the person that you're fighting with, that you're hitting each other. Well, this, I mean, how can it's you go a lot from... of tension between us because if I feel like I can't trust him and he's cheating on me and he's, you know, talking to other females, I can't have sex with him because I'm not emotionally, I'm not emotionally there. And he says, if I'm not having sex with him, what do I expect for him to do? So it's like a cycle that keeps going in circles. And like I said, so before, I guess he came out and he's taking a lie detector test today, right? Yes, he did. And if he passes these lie detector results, will that help you to begin trusting him again? It'll, it'll start the process. It'll start the process. All right, your husband's name is Stefan? Yes. All right, let's bring him up. I, I refer to Stefan as your husband, but you're, you're, you're not married, but engaged and abusing the hell out of each other. Just before you say anything, you're both abusers, you both gotta stand up. Um, I never hit her. You have two little babies in your house, and they're watching you guys do this. You have given me reason not to trust you. Are you cheating? No. Is there anything you want to tell him now? No. I never hit her. You have two little babies in your house, and they're watching you guys do this. You're both abusive. Yeah, you, you're, you're choking each other, Pardon. right? But, you know, it doesn't on, start hold, with okay. me. I know. Hold on. I have. I have. You have choked her, right? I never hit her. You never hit her? I never hit her. But I have shoved her and pushed her. I never choking, hit her. pushing. Yeah, I, I, I can say I messed up on that. that I mean, I mean it's, it's, that, it's, it's all abuse at the same time. It's exactly. All abuse. I'm saying it is. It is all abuse. And especially, you have two little babies in your house, yeah, and they're watching yes. you guys do this. And your two-year-old is coming up to mom saying, "Can you please stop? Please stop? Yeah, please and that, stop?" And that hurt. Yeah. And that hurt. That hurts like a lot. Okay, my That's... point is the reason why I have to keep talking and to keep drilling is because I can't get the truth out. But you think if... I'm cheating? All Are you the, cheating? No. You're not cheating anymore? No. When's no. the last time you cheated? 
Uh, okay, I don't remember. Oh, it's, that's on. a lot. I don't okay, remember. Just, See, this is no, the thing. Just, we break up once a week. <laughs> we break up. We break up once so a week. So when you break okay. up once a week, is, the, is that okay? That it, didn't, it, incurred, it, it didn't happen. It incurred then during them times. The thing is sex. It's if, always sex. It's sex. If I'm not getting sex, I've been there four months all summer long. If you're not getting it home, you can't fool around on the you side. No. What the okay. thing is, you have to discuss in your relationship and either. What do we need to fix in our relationship, or we need to See, go our what, separate ways? See, that's why we're here now. Okay. So, you took a lie detector test. Yes. And you're here to say, hey, look, I'm here. I could pass this. Yes. And I want you to start trusting me. Yes. But really, if you don't change your behavior, what good is this test? <laughs> do you think like marriage counseling would help with you guys? Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll certainly provide it, but we, we might not have to provide if he fails this thing, right? Right. All right, so, uh, Stefan, you took a lie detector test. You're pretty confident? Yeah, I'm sure. You don't seem like it. I'm reading I'm, your body I mean, language. I'm like... What you mean you like... Okay, wait. Too. Before he tells the test, can you come clean with me now? Tell me now. Good I point. need to know from you now. Good point. Have you been cheating? Anything. Honestly, since we, when we are in good terms, no, no. I don't want to hear in good terms. Have you been cheating? No. Okay, let's find out. No. Oh God. Um, <laughs> she gave you a chance, man. She gave me a chance of what? We asked you, have you had sexual contact with other women besides the three women Sherry already knows about? You refused to answer. That was, okay. <laughs> okay. okay I, I did. I well, did. I, I did. mean, what I does did. that say? You refused to answer the question. Have you had sexual intercourse with other women besides the three women Sherry already knows about? Refused to answer. Okay. In the last ain't 30, okay. That's not okay. In the last 30 days, while in a relationship with Sherry, have you had any sexual physical contact whatsoever with any other females besides Sherry? You answered no. And you did not tell the truth. <gasps> huh? <laughs> what Come you on. mean you did not tell the truth? Oh. I just gave you the chance to tell me without him nice. reading a lie detector test. So you couldn't that's, tell me? That's Listen. The, uh, then you could have told me that when I tell you to be honest with me. I don't need for you to come on here. If you want to talk to other people, that's fine. Let me not, know. That's not, that's not it. Listen, don't, you know, that's, that's, I, I mean, of all the unbelievable, I mean, like, shocking... I mean, I know we have arguments. This is not shocking. I know, we're, I know we have arguments, but the, the last month. You said the last month? Last 30 days. Oh, what, what was it, the last 60 days? No, that you look I'm, so confused right I'm now. I'm looking like, how, how can that? Listen, listen, save it. I don't believe you. I'm sure she doesn't, and that's what counts. Um, the fact is, you refuse to answer. If you, ref you come on the show, you know you're going to take a lie detector test. Why in the world would you refuse? I'm guessing it's because you're guilty um, or you're lying. To me, he doesn't seem like a guy that's ready to be a grown-up. He's ready to be a father, or he's ready to be a man that's committed to one woman. That's not true. What I mean, you mean it's not, not true? Then all, can you tell me? It. Can you tell me now? We went together one talking. We I wasn't talking the, when? I left the house. You only left the house for a day. It was that day. A day? So you, what, you, what do you mean? Okay. Before we escalate that uh, problem again, let's step back a little bit. And you took a lie detector test, and let's read your results. Sherry, are you currently cheating on Stefan? You answered no. You told the truth. <laughs> Besides kissing and touching with your ex-boyfriend one time, have you had any other sexual physical contact with another man while in a relationship with Stefan? You answered no. The results for that question is you did not tell the truth. No. Have you ever had sexual intercourse with another man while in a relationship with Stefan? No. Is there anything you want to tell him now? No. Okay. You answered no. 
And the results for that question is the same. You did not tell the truth. What? No. But I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be like. No, well, I have not had sexual intercourse with anyone. Well, you had Since sexual intercourse with, with someone. No, I um, did not. Why wouldn't you say, you know what? We're both not ready. We both have to be open and honest about this. We're both not ready. Let's stop having kids. Let's pretend we're one big happy family because you're not. You can't talk to each other in a civil manner. You escalate every conversation you start. And you're both sleeping around. Maybe not at this moment, but any chance you get. So it's like, why pretend this is something you both want when it clearly it isn't? I do, I do want to That's the thing. I do. I want. I you do say want. that. You say that. But, but my, action, I can, my actions was I, my right. actions and You know what, Stefan? I seriously believe. Like, you'll honestly, go back. I don't want to be with. I'm, I honestly I, don't want to be what? with nobody else. I look if at I her. If I got everything from you know her, what? I look at her. I, I see want. a beautiful woman. I, she's she's gorgeous, right? I know that. So, but I think for for a guy like you at 25, it's not good enough. I think you see other good-looking women, and you want them too. Yeah. And I think it's a natural instinct when you're younger. But if and he's not committed to you. You're not married. You, you haven't made that step, so I don't think there's anything holding you together. If you really want to be with her, like you're saying, and I'm sorry, I just can't take that too seriously, and you really want him, start fresh. You made mistakes, you made mistakes. We're going to put this behind us. You're going to take the offer that I gave you about giving you some counseling, how to talk to each other. Um, I I'm well, willing to do that, but, but not... But there can't be butts involved. There has to be... Are we going to start fresh and get the help to move us, forward? Are we going to lead us here? And when we get back home, we don't worry about the past. We work on the future. I know I love you. I'm willing to accept whatever you done done and leave it. And leave it. I, you say, you say, you say. I say the same thing. You say, thing. yeah, whatever. I don't understand that either. But at the same time, I love you, Sherry. I don't want another female. Real talk. Are you going to lead us here? Whatever happened in the past, are you going to leave it here or are we going to move on for the forward? Yeah, we, we can move on as long as it doesn't go back to the same thing. This is really a chance to say, you know what? We both messed up and I'm just too hurt and say we'll go our separate ways. Which way is it going to be? I want to move forward and keep us together. Moving forward? Trying? Yes, I mean, trying. But we, but we, Are we ready to go get some help? But we're going to leave yes. this on the stage. We're going to leave it on the stage? <laughs> Maybe not? Mm. I think we need help after this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go backstage and talk. Did you do it? No. You want to know the truth. Steven, if you're going to see now, I told you I'm so sorry. That's not your fault, Bobby, except for you let Raymond stay here. And you're the prime suspect. I knew I didn't do it, so I have nothing to worry about. You're lying. You know you're lying. Because you're, you're sick. You rape babies. No, you just you're like baby so you like So you found this very strange that you were being accused of this? Yes. You ever molest anybody? No. Who did it then? Nobody else was there. Nobody else after you. Did, did you take a lie detector test? Not until today. You are the only person he's ever said to this day. You know you did this to my baby. That's no, my baby. He cries to me about it, not you. 
tell me, just tell me why. Do you know what the results of your lie detector test is? Welcome to the show. My guest is Kathy. Kathy, you called the show, right? Yes. Now, why are you here? I'm here because my cousin raped my son three years ago when he was five years old, and I never got any justice at all. And I want my son to have the justice that he deserves. Uh, my son ended up reenacting on his friend what happened to him is how I found out about it two months after my cousin had done it to him. Um, when I'd seen that, I freaked out at first, of course, because when a mother walks in on, you know, a little boy trying to do something to another little boy that's his best friend. And, uh, I, I got to imagine it's very tough, and I see you're very emotional. Your son, five years old, and you see this, and uh, is it something that you said right away, like, man, something? I freaked out. I was like, I said, what the hell are you doing were my exact words. And I, I spanked him was my initial reaction. And I told him, um, you can't do this. What, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I freaked out, and I freaked out, and then I said, I calmed down a little bit, you know, and, I t and he's crying, of course, and so I calmed down, and I said, well, Mommy's not mad at you, and I let him know he's not in any trouble, that whoever, you know, why, you know, and I just kept asking him, why, 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 why would you do this? And he kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. I just did it. I just did it. And then I finally said, if somebody told you, because I had something happen to me when I was younger, and I was threatened, so I finally said to him, I said, did somebody tell you that, you, you know, they were going to hurt you or hurt mommy or hurt anybody, you know, if you, if you told on them and he, he just broke down and you could have seen his face. He broke down and he started bawling and he said, Raymond did it to me, mommy. He did it. He, and I said, what? And he told me in detail that he tried to rape him and then he tried to do oral things to him. And the thing is, is the, the time Raymond was staying with me, I was trying to help him at the same time and keep him out of trouble. And I looked at him like a little brother to me more than a cousin. And he was somebody that we loved and trusted very much. And so I didn't call the cops right away. My friend did later that day. The cops were called. They come and they take a statement from me and my friend that were there, a different, another friend that... Okay, so then... The police come, and what happens? They had us write a statement. They had me take my son to the emergency room, which there was nothing in the emergency room you can do because it had already been about two months. So it ha this happened afterwards? Yeah, it had already been about two months. But they called, you know, CPS and DHS, and then they, uh, they interviewed my son. They said, oh, most definitely, he's so smart. You know, we know this happened to him. Then after that... Um, you know, we left the interview and everything. You know, I'm thinking, great, they're going to get him. They're going to go after him because he was already locked up for other criminal things that he had done that had nothing to do with us. You know, months just keep going by, and I'm calling every day. Every day I'm calling this cop, annoying him, and I didn't care. You know, have you heard anything? Have you interviewed him? Because they told me they were going to do a lie detector test on him and interview him, and um, they never did the lie detector test. And they said that they interviewed him. He says, no, I didn't do it. So. And at this point, two nothing. months. They dropped the case. And did you ever confront your cousin about what happened? I've never seen him or talked to him since. And I, I'm, I want to so bad because I don't understand how he can hurt us like that when I was trying to take him in to keep him out of trouble. He was babysitting for me at the time, too because I was finishing my degree in criminal justice. Um, and I was at the very end of it, and I was having problems with babysitters, so that's why Raven was there a lot, too. And, th and this is your cousin? He's my blood biological cousin. And how old is Raymond at this time? Raymond was either, I can't remember if he was 16 or 17. I want to say 17. So he's, he's a teenager. He, and, and how long had he had been living with you, taking care of your he son? He wasn't, like, living with me. Living or come and watch your son. Like, he would be there for, like, four or five days, and then he'd be there for, like, a week or, you know, going off and on like that. Was acting normal with him, liked Raymond? Yeah, and then until, I know, there was four days that my son went to bed. 
that he and he's never done that ever since he potty trained so I knew automatically that was an abnormal sign of something going on I called the teachers you know I talked to everybody I'm like have you noticed anything and everybody's no you know so I don't I think that's why he did it and does he tell you himself exactly what happened or is this the police informing you of what no, happened? No, my son told me after, you know, he broke down and told me the whole story. And then I stopped him, you know, after after he told me what happened. And I stopped him and I said, you know, don't say anything else. We can't talk about this anymore, you know. And I held him and I cried and I cried and I told him I'm so sorry. <laughs> Steve, if you could have seen him, I told him I'm so sorry. And my son says to me, Mommy, it's okay. It's okay. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Mommy, except for you let Raymond stay here. <laughs> Who did it then? Nobody else was there. Nobody else after you. Did. did you take a lie detector test? Not till today. You are the only person he's ever said to this day. Because you think you like babies. No, you just you like baby attention. So you like Do you know what the results of your lie detector test is? And so today you want to know the truth, whether this happened or not. Yes. This happened three, four years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago. And you've never had a chance to confront Raymond? I've never seen him. I've never talked to him. I don't talk to anybody in my biological family. I just recently started talking to three other members of my family. And how is your son now after this happened? He's in therapy. Does, does he act normally? Is he, is he a happy child? No, not, I mean, he can get very angry, and he doesn't, he's not as easy to, I don't know. Um, Have you seen a big change bonding. in his demeanor since this happened? Yeah, and how with bonding with males or anything like that. He did, doesn't. It's very hard. He, I mean, he's not trusting. Did you have a good relationship with Raymond? Yes, I and thought we were him? very close. I mean, I loved him. Like I said, I loved him like a brother. That's why I don't understand why he would do this, and it really makes me mad. I don't... What were you told that Raymond says about this incident? Because obviously, he's denied it. I was told it. by the cop. The only thing I was told was that he denied it. In your heart, do you believe he did this? I believe with all my heart. I believe my son. I wouldn't believe any different... I really honestly, even if the lie detector test came back and said that he didn't do it, I don't know that I would still believe he didn't. Because why would my son know that that hurts? You don't know that hurts unless it's happened. And he screamed it, you know, that he said he screamed that it hurt, it hurt, it hurt. You don't know that that hurts unless it's happened. Raymond took a lie detector test. Did you also take a yes, lie detector I did. test? And we'll get to those results. Do you feel... Like, you're up to confronting your cousin? You haven't seen him since this happened? Yep. For three it's years? For my you... baby. I don't care. That's my son. And, you, and all this time, these three years, you've been believing that Raymond tried to rape your son. So it's perfectly clear. He did, according to your son, rape him and tried, have oral... Tried, tried to do the thing, but the deep And thing did have done. oral sex with him. Yes. Never bad blood between you and Raymond before this all no, came out? No, never. Never. All right, Kathy, what I want to do is, before I let you confront Raymond, I'm going to ask you to leave the stage. I'm going to talk to Raymond, and I'll bring you back out. Okay. Let's bring out Raymond. How you doing, Raymond? You good, and yourself? Well, I hear... You are accused of raping a uh, five-year-old boy, right? Yes. Until we clarify whether we find out what you have to say, whether you did or not, would you mind standing until we know? That's my job. <laughs> You've been accused of a pretty horrific thing here, raping a five-year-old boy, having oral sex with a five-year-old boy. Did you do it? No. Any reason why your cousin says you were watching her son, that she comes in one day, she sees her little boy reenacting something that he's something so horrific. 
terrible happened to him. He's reenacted on another little boy, and then the son says, Raymond did it. Raymond tried to do this to me. He made me do these horrible things. He did the, it hurt. It was very painful, five-year-old saying this. I have no idea why he would say that. We were always close, and what I don't understand is why he would wait till two months after the fact to start saying this. Five-year-old boy, right? Right, but if it hurt, which I'm sure it would if it actually happened, why would he not just go tell his mother? Maybe, maybe somebody months? older than him was threatening him, saying, if you say this to anybody, I'm going to hurt you. If you tell anybody, I'm going to do this again. Did he ever act strange with you? Did he ever say, hey, Raymond, this guy's doing this to me? That, any clue at all that could somebody doing this to him? No, he's just a normal kid. So you're accused of this really horrible thing. How, how were the police supposed to came and talk to you, right? Yes. And so what happened that you weren't charged? Uh, I was already incarcerated when they came and talked to me, and they showed up one day, and they asked me what happened. They told me the allegations. I told them I had no idea why my name would even be brought up. They uh, asked me if I'd be willing to do a lie detector and a DNA test. I said yes. They did a DNA test, waited, came back about two weeks later, and told me I had nothing to worry about. My name was dropped. Did you take a lie detector okay. test? No, they said after the DNA that everything was cleared up. How was, uh, what well, that doesn't make sense because if there were two months later, as you said yourself, he waited two months, there wouldn't be any DNA test for anyways, right? Right. So how would a DNA test clear you? I was just, I proved that I was innocent or I felt I did at the time and so did the police. I thought that was the end of it. So here you are in this little boy's life, you're taking care of him, you're his caregiver, right? Off and on, yes. Off and on, taking care of a little boy. You, any feelings for him? Yeah, I loved him. You love I mean, him? I still love him. You still love him? Have you ever talked to him since? No, I haven't. Have you ever talked to Kathy, the mother? No, I haven't. So here you're in their lives every day. You're taking care. You love the little boy. You hear that he's raped. Nothing. You don't tell the police, man, we need to get to the bottom of this. I, I, need, I want to take a lie detector test to prove. Nobody says, you know, DNA, two months after it happened. How is that clear yet? I was just going with what the investigators asked me if I would do. I said yes. They took the DNA and they said that was it. You know you did this to my baby. That's no, my no. baby. He cries to me about it, not you. You're not curious as to find out if this happened to the boy? No, and I, I don't feel like I should. Anything happened between you and Kathy that maybe she got mad about? Anything, do you guys ever got in a big fight over something and maybe she got a little pissed at you and said, eh, I'm going to get back at this guy? No, we were always pretty close. The only thing that happened is when we found out I couldn't stay up there, that was pretty much the last time we hung out. And Who told her that you couldn't stay there anymore? Uh, my mom. You're, you got a pretty decent relationship with your cousin. You've seen her, seen a son, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're out of her life and you've never, ever talked to her again. <laughs> And you never talk to the little boy again. Right. You say you, you blame her for this, right? Yes. Because obviously she blamed you. People hear about this, that you did this. If you didn't do it, it's got to be a kind of a bad thing to be walking around with this mm -hmm. on your shoulders, right? Yeah. If, couldn't she just be believing her son? Do you believe that her son maybe said, hey, Raymond did this to me? No, because after the investigation was dropped on me there was investigations on two other people from what the rest of my family had told me so i don't see how he could say it was me and then also blame two other people for the same thing you're saying after this the police investigated two other guys yes and how do you know that that's what our family had told me so this is just somebody in your family saying oh yeah they they checked out two other guys well it was someone that would you, it was that told me it, you're accused of this Five, you know, raping a five-year-old little boy, has this affected your life at all? Yes, it has. And how has it? Uh, family comes over with kids. You know, I know I didn't do it. My whole family knows I didn't do it. But just to pick up a child, you got to sit there and wonder, well, someone's going to look at me weird. Someone's going to act different. Do people, do they? I don't know if they do, but I feel like they do. So I try to avoid the whole situation. Have you ever babysit anybody else since then? Yes, I babysit constantly. And... Their, they and their parents know about the accusations against you? Yes. All right. You haven't seen your cousin in three years? No. Never talked to her since this was brought up? No. You ready to see your cousin now? Yeah. Let's bring her out. Here's Kathy. 
What do you want to say? I want to know where all these lights. Who else, Raymond? Who else? You want to tell me that? Who else did it then? I don't know. I wasn't. Who around. did it then? Nobody else was there. Nobody else after you. You did too. You're bring other of, people you're over. Full of, you're full of Raymond. Sit here and tell all the lies you want to. You know you did to my baby. That's no, my baby. He cries to me about it, not you. Did he blame That's the other two people that you had What two people? I had no other charges than anybody else. Nobody else. You're the only one. You are the only person he's ever said to this day. So you got anything else you want to lie about out here? I don't have I to. Had I had no problem. You're lying. You're, you're lying. You know you're lying. Tell me it. why. Why? You, you are sick. You're sick. You need help. Don't, you're sick. don't, don't touch each other. You're sick. You need help. You need some real help. For what? I've done nothing wrong. Because you're sick. You rape babies. No, you just you're like attention, raper. so you like to yes. accuse a lot of people yes, or whatever. Yes, this is my so attention Kathy. getter. Why else would you bring an issue like this on public television? Somebody's not telling the truth here. But what I find is strange is I don't, I, I'm just going to go, I don't know <clears throat> what was asked on the slide detector test. We're going to get to it. I don't know what they ask either one of you. But what, I, I'll say like just common sense, I think her, something happened to her little boy. I don't think a five-year-old can make this up. And I won't say that nothing did happen, and, but I'm and, saying I and did I think, anything. I think her son went to Kathy and said, Raymond did this to me. Because you, why, if, and I'm asking you, any fights, any bad blood, anything happened? No. We were getting along. She says you were a good guy. She's not saying anything bad about you. She's, you're not saying anything bad about her. But then, like, again, I say, what, what normal guy, even at 16, 17, how old are you now? 20. 20 years old. You're in this woman's life. You're in this little boy's life. And this, you're accused of rape. You're accused of... So why would well, I put myself back in what the same I'm situation saying is, to well, What I want to know is you just walk out of the little boy's life and you're not curious as to find out if this happened to the boy, that justice is done, that there's a thorough police investigation, that the police get to the bottom of it. Whether you did it or not, you, do you believe something happened to this little boy? I have no idea. I don't know what was going on with But you him. haven't bothered to find out, have you? No, and, and I don't feel like I should. You, you don't feel like you should. Why well, put myself back in the same situation? I don't know if you have to again. put yourself right back in the situation. You're not obviously going to be watching him anymore. You're not going to be babysitting for him anymore. You're removed, but I think you could pick up the phone, I think, or you could have your mom pick up the phone or somebody and say, hey, Kathy, you know, I know you might hate me and think I did it, but I'm, I want to prove to you, I want to let you know I didn't do this. I don't want you to go through another sleepless night, an agonizing night, thinking of what possibly happened to your son. I want to help put a stop to that. You thinking it's me. The police just walk in the cell and say, ah, you're cleared. That's it. No compassion for this woman. No compassion for her son. After being blamed for something like that, no, I'm completely done with them. You know? What did the little boy do oh, wrong to you? Don't worry about it because we're done with what you. Did, what did the little, don't worry about that. What did the little boy do wrong to you? Absolutely nothing, but he comes with his mother, and I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to be accused. This, so this is your attention. family, right? Yes. So you don't care what the hell Kathy thinks about you? I don't. I was incarcerated. I didn't know what was going so on. So just they as came, long as, as, long as the okay. police say you didn't do it, you're okay with it. I knew I didn't do it, so I have nothing to worry about. How in the hell did you lie about a brother like that? Know you were that close don't to even. She would want to yeah. put him in jail. Yes. Just for attention. She's done it several of the family members. The results of Kathy's lie detector test. The more I hear the story, the less I believe of it. And you know what else gets me? No emotion on your part. None. I haven't, I did nothing wrong, so I... Oh, so nothing wrong? Mm, nothing wrong. I know I didn't do it. Exactly. So no, no caring for the little boy. These are normal reactions from somebody? I know if I was accused of raping a five-year-old, I'd be ripping my scalp off my head. I don't know if I could sleep. And it took three years, but I'm over it. I know I've done nothing wrong. I know I wouldn't do that either, but I know, I, knowing that I was accused of this, knowing that somebody that I cared about 
was was crying and worried about their son for every day. I don't know if I could sleep. Well, three years later, you learn. No, three I know years I later, it. it's ancient history, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. For you, it's ancient history. Eh, don't worry about it. Just anything to get attention, right? Yeah, it's all attention, Raymond. I it's know. all attention. I know it is. It's all attention. I think I that's why you might be here. Not me. Uh, yeah, that's why you're the one that called the yeah, show. Yeah, I called the show because I want to know. I want to know. And if I did it, why the hell would I be dumb enough to come here? Because there's a, a whole lot test. of dumb people in this world, that's why. A whole lot of dumb ones. You've never been tormented for even for a second over this, have you? Actually, yeah, I have been. Really? Yeah. How? How were you tormented? Incarcerated as a juvenile with everyone asking you. You weren't you. incarcerated for that. No, I wasn't. But when the investigators come in there and people ask, well, hey, what was that about? Oh, oh well, sure my cousin you just tried told saying. I'm sure you just told them. I'm sure you did. You have a sister named Alina? Yes. And she's here, and she has something she wants to say. Let's bring her out. You have no clue. You weren't there. You don't watch my brother. I know my brother. My brother's a terrible kid. That's not you. Good. I'm glad he's around your kids. That's real smart, Alina. You know why? Your family smart. doesn't want nothing to do with you. I don't care. I don't it's want anything to do with you. Because they know you're lying. I haven't talked to him for years. You I don't lie care. about this all the yes. time. That's why you were yes. in and out of juvie when you were a kid. Sure was. That's and why I had a bad past. And I've changed my life. And I'm a better person. Because you accused too many people so many times. I've never accused anybody. You accused so many people after you couldn't get him. You I turned turn right around and accused else. other people. Who? My Who? brother may not stand up for Who? himself because this does he did torment stand him here. every day. Who? Who this else did I accuse? I'm not. You guys keep name. saying this. You have nothing my to do with this. You want my brother to be a living babysitter? That's why you want. No, I was trying to get you him out. Guys, you had guys in and out of your house sure all did. the time. Whatever, Anybody could have done that to you. You don't even know me. If it happened to your son, you have no idea. You've never been around me. No, because I never want to be around you because I know who you are. I know the I was, type of person I was you are. adopted out of the family. Guys in and out of your house constantly. Why, why are you so angry with her? That she can accuse my brother of this. She, I but she's saying, listen, done anything she's like not this. saying that she's accusing him. Her little boy, don't you think a five-year-old who's saying Raymond did this? I asked her. She's not, and the police, the police, according, interviewed. What I don't understand is, you know, the DNA test, which, like, again, I don't believe the police came two months later, gave a DNA test. Eh, we didn't find anything. Do You're we, not going to find anything after two months. Do we actually know that her son said my brother's name? No, we have no factual proof of that. Bring the papers she out. Could, I brought the papers. She could have said that. I brought the papers. Said, Are you curious as to find out? I you, did not coerce hold on, him. Hold on a second, Kathy. Do you see your brother standing up here? Saying the things he's saying, showing no emotion at all. He, he cares do that. about this little boy. He is. I see him every what day. What type of he person is he? Me. He cries every day. He's scared of having his own kids because of people like her turning yeah. on him. Yeah. Making him, making everybody think that he's a child molester. He is not. Otherwise, I would not have him in my home taking care of my kids. I know. My brother is torturing himself every day because of this. He can't even continue a relationship with a woman that he loved a lot because of this. He didn't ask the police if it actually happened. He didn't ask the police, please let me know what's because going on with this. Because they told me not to get involved with it. They said that my the, part on Who it was says that? Your done. family. Okay, police. No, that's you're what you told me. But I'm saying, okay, done. police, they don't talk, contact your family ever again. I won't. And she's not worth it. So, no, I'm not She's going not to worth it. What did she do up to this time. point? You said she did nothing wrong. You had a good relationship with her. She's accusing me of something I didn't do. She's saying her little boy said it. Result for rape. Do you have a rape, Kathy's son? You answered no. Do you know what the results of your lie detector test is? Did the police come to you and say a little boy said it? No. Did you ask him if he said it? No. Well, when someone comes to you with something like that, if you the don't police sit there came to you, what, I would say, I did him? the little boy say it was me? You never asked that question. Wouldn't you say that's a fair question? Yeah. Why wouldn't he ask that question then? But honestly, how do we know that the little boy actually said that? He well, then a good thing. You know how would you know? You know how would you know? You would ask the police.
Because that's not you the first thing going through my mind after getting accused of something this? like this. Wouldn't you say that? Wouldn't a normal human being ask that question? Because when you get accused of something like that, you don't sit there and think, well, what should I ask? Well, what did you think? I want to know what the f is going on. Why that's my, my point! That's my point! We do have the CPS interviews that the son told investigators it was you. CPS came involved. They did an interview with the little boy, and it was their determination. It was their determination that it was you. And that's why they did an investigation, and they said drop everything. Oh, and leave, so, so you know why, why they, they did it. the investigation, right? The only thing they told me is that I was being accused of sexually molesting. Who was accusing you? I don't know. Oh, really? I was more worried about well, why the was my name brought up. You know what, what's going on? I'm well, that's my point. Why was my name brought up? Did you ask that question? Yes, and they said they said just hang on. We're asking the questions. They asked just the questions. Just hang on. Just hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I'm hanging on. <laughs> I know you want to defend your brother, and I know you probably love him, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing that for families stick together, you stick up for your brother. But even you, even you have to be able to look past whatever your feelings for her and say, who the hell doesn't ask that question? True. <laughs> Some, you are being accused of doing a horrific crime against a child. What would your response be? Who said it? And exactly. Why? Did, the, did the little child say it? Wouldn't every person ask that question? I don't know. So and you you're just, you and you're you're just freely, and at this point, you're just freely talking to the police, right? Well, when, when there's you're a bunch just, of police you're, sitting there you're asking questions about something like this, yeah, you're, you're going to be a little scared. Yes, I was. You didn't ask for a lawyer? No. You didn't ask for anybody? No. So, and you didn't ask any questions. Police just asked you, and you're just, okay. What did they I was, ask you? What did the police ask you? They asked me if I ever touched them. I said no. They asked me if I've ever done anything with them. I said no. They asked me if I'd be willing to do a lie detector and a DNA test. I said yes. They and for some reason, they never got to the lie detector test. They said after the DNA test came back, they said that... And did you I ever ask... Else. I'm just curious how that DNA... How did that clear me? You didn't ask that question? No, I'm mean, being accused of something like this. You're going to be kind of scared. You know, I didn't know what was going on. And My point exactly. You'd be scared, and you would want to get to the bottom of it, right? I was trying to get it over with and prove that I had nothing to do with it. So and it how were you dropped. trying to prove you had nothing to do with it? By going along with whatever they wanted me to do. How do you know that your brother didn't do this? Because I know my brother. He cares a lot for little kids, and he would never do such a horrid thing like that. I thought never. so, too. And he's watching your children? Right? Yeah. You, no pause here. No concern like, wow, you know, there really wasn't anything that really cleared him here. No concern at all because I know my brother. You know your brother. Yes. Okay. And again, for your own children's protection, we want to dive into that a little deeper. You know, DNA test didn't clear you. That's for sure. We know that for a fact. DNA well, test didn't did. clear you. Nah. They didn't clear you. That's why the whole investigation got dropped. The, all I was told, it, no, no I was evidence. never told anything about a DNA test. There was nothing in the paperwork about a DNA test, nothing. The only thing that was ever said to me is, is he said I didn't do it. Okay, well, the That's one thing that was we, ever you, said what we're going to find out is you're saying she just made this all up, and the reason for that would be again? She's an attention seeker, yeah. massively. So she the would, would want to yeah. put him in jail yes. just for attention. She's done it to several of the family members. So she goes around accusing men all the time of raping yes. her son? Yes. Of raping her son? Who else? Yes. I've never accused anybody okay. else. Okay. The results of Kathy's lie detector test. She was asked, did you coach your son to say that he was sexually molested by Raymond? She answered, no. Did you make up the story about Raymond sexually abusing your son? She answered, no. Did you ever sexually abuse your son? She answered, no. Do you know that someone other than Raymond sexually abused your son? And the answer is no. Answered four questions, asked four questions, answered four questions. And the subject has told the truth. Now, now, 
Perinette. Still not worried. Yeah, but are, aren't you a little concerned that she's been telling the truth? Hold Everything you accused her of, she kind of refutes that. She passes a lie detector test. Okay. That's it? Okay. Okay. But I'm the ignorant so one. So something, something might have happened to her son. I'm sorry for that. There's she might have said it was Raymond. I'm sorry for that. But I know it's not my brother. How? Because Again, what evidence do you have? I don't have to have evidence. You don't have to have evidence. Just a good belief, right? You both accused her of making this up, that she does this for, to seek attention, as you said. That's her whole motivation, is she likes attention, and she made all this up against Raymond, made this whole thing up for attention. In light of her passing a lie detector, actual evidence, actual being able to pass a lie detector test, neither one of you say, eh, I'm sorry I said that about you. No. No. No, because of the fact that I'm here for something this messed up that I didn't do. If one of her children came to you and said, this person did this to me, would you call the police? Yes, I would. And you want the police to investigate? Yes, I would. I don't hold it against her. So if a child came to you and said, this person did this to you, you'd have to take action and do something about it, right? No, but after the police get involved, Right, but say, I'm saying... Yes, I would. Okay, so would she be wrong to be saying, you know... I'm, I'm mad at this person. My son, my daughter told me this person molested him. No, but after the police say to drop the whole thing because he was cleared, you'd think it would be dropped. And then three years later, here we are. You wouldn't be concerned if your son kept saying this person molested me? Yes, I would be. Would you still hold anger against that person? Yes, I would. Results for Raymond. Did you ever sexually abuse Kathy's son? You answered no. Did you ever rape Kathy's son? You answered no. Did you force Kathy's son to engage in oral sex? And you answered no. And do you know what the results of your lie detector test is? Results for Raymond. Did you ever sexually abuse Kathy's son? You answered no. Did you ever rape Kathy's son? You answered no. Did you force Kathy's son to engage in oral sex? And you answered no. And do you know what the results of your lie detector test is? That I was telling the truth. You're correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know, and I apologize. If something like that did happen, I'm sorry. But to become at and for me to be blamed for it, and on national television, then okay, I'll say I'm sorry. You don't have to ever talk to me a day in my life. And because I don't honestly, I really don't know if I if, how I feel right now. And that's fine. You I believe right, my baby. That's your it's child. my baby. I have to protect him. And I understand that. But at the same time, do you know I what have... it's like to be accused of it when you didn't do anything? No, but I know what it's like to have a child tell me for three years that you did it. I, know I had to live with like. being said that I did it for three years. From who? From the whole family, from myself. Your family's been pretty supportive of you. They are supportive. They tell me right off they the bat. They don't hold they know anything do against you. She's letting you watch her kids. But if you're accused of something, are you going to be able to pick up a child that you love and not look around and be like, oh, am I supposed to do this? This doesn't feel right. Or someone looking at me weird? I mean, you honestly, mean me, honestly, me, you're asking me. But honestly, that's hurt. how I feel. I'm not it's saying it hurt. doesn't. I'm not saying it doesn't, but I know what my baby has said to me. And I know what I have done. Okay. And I said, I'm sorry on national television that I drug you through this show, but I had I to know. I'm sorry that that happened. You want to be cleared of it? Yes, that's why I would. Okay. That's why we came here. Hello. Do you, do you feel this is any good for you that you actually. I'm not worried about me because I know I didn't do it. I just want her to be able to think that I didn't do it, whether we talk or not. But you, hit, you just said you had concerns. Everybody thought this about you. Now you've came on. You passed the test. But still, just to be accused? Okay. You, you, you got accused. Wondering, well, what have I done to make me be accused? No, I didn't ask you No, that. that's how I feel. I that's said, what okay. I think about but myself. But what I'm saying is I think any person accused of such a crime would take more steps, would ask more questions, would get more involved with their family than what you did. I agree, but I've never been close to anyone in my family. You've never been what? I've never really been like me and Kathy. We did get pretty close. Were you ever close but, with your sister? Yes, but the, the whole there's always gaps. 
I didn't start hanging out with Kathy. There's no until gaps I was there. About she she's like no, let actually you there was a big gap. Okay, the point is, she's you've been accused of this. She's letting you watch your kids. I don't know if there's any more trust that she can put into you, knowing after you've been accused of this. That's that's about as trustworthy as you get with somebody. Don't wouldn't you say? Yes. You feel any relief at all that you you're on TV, you got the lie detector test, you didn't do it. Any relief at all? There is some, but at the same time I know that just being accused of it. It does hurt, and it does go deep, and it stays. Hey, I'll agree with you there. I'm sure it stays with you. I'm sure it hurts, and I'm sure it's one of the most horrible things you can go through, being falsely accused. But you know what? When you're accused of something, you take more actions than, ah, oh, the police are telling me to hold on, hang on. And I agree. I, and when it, and I, I, I don't believe anybody listens to the police when they say, ah, walk away from that person. Don't ever talk to them again. And you do? You had this great relationship with her, as you said. Oh, it was great. We didn't have, and you just walk away out of her life forever. If it meant not being accused of something like this or getting drugged into something like this again, then yes. All right. Well, have have a nice life. Right. Have a nice life. You can go with your brother. Let's have a seat, Jackie. Thanks. Well, I believe something happened. I believe your son. I'm sure something horrible had to happen where he did what you say he did. I believe you. I think the one good thing is now you don't have to be barking up the wrong tree here with this guy. I apologize. Well, you know what? I don't think you did anything wrong. If your son is saying that... <laughs> and CPS saying they did an investigation and your son was telling them. But maybe your son was confused. But there was nobody else around. Like, they're saying I brought so many men around. Listen, who, again. I was in school. You know what? I was too busy for that. You, you don't want the one person that's saying, hey, you were a good mother, and that they, they saw that you treating your kids really good was Raymond. Raymond said you were a good and mother. I am a good mom. I know I am. I don't doubt that. But now I feel terrible because now I don't know who or what happened to my child. What do you do in that situation? And my child, even he, this morning when I talked to him, said that it happened. You, you, you expressed some, some <laughs> guilt about bringing Raymond around, that it was your fault, but... Now you know if, if you brought Raymond around and he didn't do this, that's got to be some relief to you. I don't feel like a bad mom. <laughs> Something happened somewhere. Things happen. And I mean, I wish I could sit here and say, if you do everything right, nothing's going to happen. But that's not the truth. I mean, honestly, we go through this world, we go through this life. And you worry and you try to take precautions and you try to do things so nothing happens. But you know what? Evil still gets through the door sometimes. And what can you do? You know what you do? You do what you do. You wake up and you fight the fight. And you keep going one day at a time. You're getting help for your child, right? Your son's in therapy. Well, I, I, the one thing I hope it brings you some some relief in your mind about Raymond. I wish we could have gave you something. I wish we could point to the bad guy. Honestly, I'm glad you didn't have to throw the chair for once, Steve. <laughs> Raymond said you're a good mom. I think you're a good mom. Keep being a good mom for your son. All right? Mm -hmm. Let's go.
The police did arrest you. They arrested me, and I'm still not backing down. And I don't mind whatever I got to go through to get to the point where my dog...